Colin Clark. Yeah. 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 Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm delighted to see a fellow Scot in the chair, and much yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an honour to follow the Honourable Member for Central Ayrshire. And it's an honour to speak for the people of Gordon and the constituency. Yeah. Yeah. The constituency was formed in 1983 and was loyally represented by two members. Malcolm Bruce represented Gordon from 1983 to 2015. He was an able and well-admired Member of Parliament. He became a member of the Privy Council in 2006, was knighted in 2012 and became a life peer in 2015, Lord Bruce of Benahee. I wish to pay tribute to my immediate predecessor, Alex Salmond, who was elected to Gordon in 2015. A former First Minister for Scotland, he served both at Westminster and Holyrood, first elected to Bamford Buchan in 1987. He was a parliamentarian for 30 years, 30 years of public servant and dedicated to his cause, and I wish him all the very best. Yeah. 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 Travelling through Gordon, you start in the west in the hills, first coming to Huntley, the home of the Gordon clan. Heading east, you experience the Howes and valleys taking the Giri and Inveruri, onto Ellen and the coast at Nubra and Balmedi. This is good, productive land on a scale that can compete, dominated by family farms. This constituency also takes in large parts of the north of the city of Aberdeen. Expanding rapidly during the boom years, it has shown remarkable resilience. Industrious, it is adapted to lower oil prices, and I look forward to the city-region deal linking the city and shire. Yeah. Gordon has a diverse economy, a resilient economy, driven by locally growing entrepreneurs. An area of enterprise and employment, the number of registered businesses has grown from 4,500 to 5,200 over five years. Having seen downturns in the North Sea before, many supply companies have moved their focus to exports outside Europe. Exports of personnel with expertise developed in the North Sea, technology built and manufactured in the North East, and unique engineering techniques applicable to other industries. Offshore oil and gas is focused on efficiency. It is a long-term investor and needs stability. The downturn on oil and gas has shown us to promote other industries, such as tourism. Long neglected, Gordon is rich with castles, stunning and bracing beaches, and access to limitless outdoor pursuits. The area is well served by hotels and restaurants, and very well served by served by golf courses, yeah. even one owned by the President of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> Industry, however, has been hurt by punitive business rates in the North East. During the oil boom, there was a froth of high rents. Business rates increases of 100 to 200 per cent are not unusual and coincide with a fragile recovery. The business sector recognises it must contribute, but excessive rates damage employment it damages investment and it damages sentiment, and we are at risk of displacing jobs. The Scottish Government committed that every penny raised locally would stay local. It was none other than my predecessor, the former First Minister, who had made this change to regional finances. And I ask that North East Regional Councils get to keep the extra funds raised, allowing councils, if they so choose, to mitigate the business rates. All three North East constituencies are geographically dominated by farming. Farming in Scotland is the bedrock of the food and drink industry, which turns over £14 billion. It accounts for 19% of total fat manufacturing and it supports 360,000 jobs. Agriculture deserves our support going forward to support efficient production and to achieve a fair share of the high street price for being the bedrock of the food and drink industry. In light of today's debate, I would implore the Minister to highlight the plight of health provision in Gordon, in the north east of Scotland, to his counterpart in the Scottish Government. <laughs> Aberdeen Royal Infirmary serves 600,000 people. We depend upon its continued expertise. It is of utmost importance that it preserves its international reputation as a teaching hospital. In the last few years, it is risk of playing second fiddle to the hospitals of Glasgow and Edinburgh. The people of Gordon would ask you to respect the geography. It is three to four hours travel time to the central belt, and we need to look again at the shortage of doctors and nurses in the northeast. 
Gordon, like so many other areas, has an ageing population, and I would encourage the Minister to bring the debate out into the open on how we best prepare for demands on our services in the future. Gordon and the whole of the North East make a huge contribution to the Scottish and UK economy, paying for the services we all depend on. It is not an area of privilege, but an area of hard work, an area of new start-ups and reinvention, an area of enterprise and employment. Gordon was an outward-looking constituency, a confident area, an area of optimism and growth, ready to embrace opportunities, including Brexit. Through the democratic process, Gordon has fiercely defended its place in the United Kingdom. Madam Deputy Speaker, I would suggest to the honourable members opposite, this country needs to talk up its opportunities, talk up its position in the world, and be positive about the road that lies before us.